Is it a long one or a short one? Okay, this is, this is also a short one. Should I be worried? Probably. Item SCP-2395. Object Class Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. Observation Post 44 is to maintain communication and support from Area 30 while continuing surveillance of SCP-2395 and SCP-2395-A. A precautionary 250-mile radius zone around SCP-2395 has been established, which Observation Post 44 will continue to monitor, monitor for any notable movement or activity. Further information from SCP-2395-A's occupant has, has been deemed unlikely following communication with Dr. Mill. Description SCP-2395 is a giant price tag located at... Uh, fuck, 82 degrees 08... 02.1S 16 degrees 59... 05.5 west in Antarctica. Observing aerial drones have recorded SV 2395 to have the price of $585.98. SV 2395 is tied to a small rebar loop embedded in the ground by a, a 0.7 meter length of twine. SCP 2395's dimensions are 258 meters by 90 meters in length and with a 2.5 meter layer of polythene covers with the paper inscribed with SCP-2395's price. SCP-2395 possesses unpredictable centrifugal and central, central pedal movement around the rebar loop, usually being manipulated and shifted by unknown forces in random directions and velocities. One instance has occurred where SP-2395 maintained a constant velocity of approximately 65 kilometers an hour on the date of November, 7, uh, November 2nd, 2016. Spinning clockwise for 49 seconds. Researchers note that the twine that secures SP-2395 on the rebar loop may possess Plus anomalous tensile properties. SCP 2395 A is a wooden shack located 0.3 kilometers east of SCP 2395. Structure is empty save for a room in which an unknown individual, presumably a human female, prohibits access from within. The door to their room is engraved with the initials LCE. This individual designated SCP-2395-B has supported to no verbal communication, but has occasionally been recorded conversing with other entities. Addendum 2395-Q August 2nd, 1968 After numerous attempts to establish an interview with SCP-2395-B, surveillance cameras recorded a saw protruding from the door, creating a rectangular hole akin to a mail slot, and a scrap of paper being pushed out. A written message on the paper contained the following. Fine, write down questions, and I'll get them in my downtime. Dr. Mill from Area 30 was brought to communicate with SCP-2395-B and suggested continued usage of paper notes to recover more information. Note that SCP-2395 5-B's responses are received in one or two days of the following. Dr. Mill's responses. Mill, if you would prefer, I pass notes like this rather than confess. All I'd like to do is ask a few questions regarding your environment and role. Would this be fine? 2395-B. Ten words or less. Uh, ten words greater, less than or equal to ten words or, or else you're wasting my time. Could you explain why you're here? It's freaking cold all day, and I have work. What kind of work? I'm making, I'm waiting for purchase offers. The price isn't set in stone, but this is the kind of minimum we have to offer to make a profit. So you're working for an organization? 
You're, you're blind or something. Name's on the door. Can you explain the price tag's movement? I already said, I'm trying to make a sale here. What exactly are you selling? Earth. Please elaborate. Earth, planet, Terra Nova, blue ball of life, flesh, cesspool, etc. That doesn't explain the price tag's movement. Well, you know, when you pick up a stick with a dying leaf on it, or when you pick up something at a s store with a price tag attached to it and expect it a bit, and the price tag might flop around a bit. You might grab the price tag to get a look at the price. Now imagine something else looking at that price tag. I should scratch that since you can't. You can it now. We're selling the earth. And I'm busy speaking with two willing buyers. Addendum 2395-LC for, for more information regarding group of interest, light carrier enterprises, contact Dr. Mill for admiral incidents. Further information can also be obtained from SCP-1920, SCP-1940, SCP-1740, and SCP-2940. I feel like we should look at those just in case of anything. Alright, what, what is this? Oh, it actually gets a picture of what this is. Okay, that's a cruelly made wooden wind turbine. <laughs> Okay, apparently it will inject confetti when spinning. And male voices will say like things like this, like thank you once again, creatures, possibly splendid, stuff like that. So basically this is not dangerous at all. It's just a turbine that randomly charges electricity, spits out confetti in a male voice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and the next one. So that was from a commercial business manifest inside of an enclosure. So this is the turbine the money's on. Uh, this is a different one. It's 1940, and this is basically looks like a random <laughs> commercial business will manifest inside an enclosure with people and there's and. Uh, apparently they'll sell, they will sell all, they'll sell uh, anomalous products, apparently. Huh. Okay. 1740 is a public playground. Yeah, and actually, about. Oh my god. Apparently, dash one instances are plastic mold, mold of an animal mounted on a metal spring, and they'll go towards adolescent people. And it will prevent them from leaving SCP 1740. Including slamming into the subjects. Oh my god. So this... The playground just keeps children in. That's basically what it is. Okay. Well, that's fucked. 2940. So if an underground bunker... Uh, this is jail for children. This is, uh, it looks like it's a oh, it's similar to a German industrial bunkers from World War II. Mm. Okay, it got worse. And remember, it will follow you as far as twenty meters. Okay. Oh wait, this is a different SCP. This is not the playground. This is 2940. Yeah, I left that one. <laughs> Sorry, I, I didn't. I was reading 1740 because literally it stuffed people under it. Yeah. But the next one, 2940, is underground bunker, similar to German industrial bunker. 
World War II. And apparently the food is similar to biological tissues from small intestines. What, what if we finish 1740 instances need, need no nourishment and have shown no signs of fatigue. People trapped by this SCP will get water, uh, and which are produced by unknown means. doesn't say where the kids are being kept looks like. Oh. <laughs> if you sit on SCP-1740. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. The benches. <laughs> Bad time. Bad time on the benches. <laughs> Were you on, was it 1940 or 2940? 2940. Okay. Bunk World War II style bunker, right? Uh, extensive underground bunker, yeah. German industrial bunker from World War II. Oh, joy. It's like similar. It's not exactly, but it's similar. Okay. It has 10 floors. And have five residences consisting of families of three or five. You know, trying to separate the resident means of redacted and similar to biological testicles from small intestines, but otherwise remains partially mechanical. Waste materials are moved by means of the same process. Oh, that sounds like hell. Yeah. Right there is that she is like this is very humans of age and ethnicity. Physical enormous following death through economy and teleportation with all resonances are most commonly observed properties. Jesus. And apparently the entrance to SV2940, the stairwell next to the, each floor is medical bay out there. All instances claim there's no stairwell such stairway ex exist so they can't see the exit if you live there yeah and your body will get more normal if you are you die <laughs> so there is no death there's just becoming less human yeah it looks like you oh my gosh I just looked at the dash B instance. SCP 2940 B is a human cadaver that progressively gains autonomy and hostility towards all living organisms, correlating to the depth of floor it inhabits when within SCP 2940. It's just a cadaver that just wakes up and starts beating the shit out of everyone. My god. Yeah, it looks like it's it's basically a hellish German, similar German bunker. With a corpse. Also, I'm looking up what the hell uh, Falco Respiculus is. Yeah. It's a it's a falcon genus. Yeah. Why does he have a bunch of falcon? Far parts in his body. 
I don't know. <laughs> do, do you think SCPs can be explained? Both arms have wings extending from the humerus. Okay. Plumage of both wings are also identifiable as the as the falcon. Yeah. Anyways, I. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Go in intermission. I'm going to intermission. You can continue looking at it and talking with the chat because that one's a really fucked one. <laughs> but I have to go pee again. Okay. But I don't think at the SCP. One nine four zero. I know we looked at one nine two zero. I played one with the two nine four zero. Yeah, one nine four zero was a commercial business one. I just didn't talk a, a, a lot about it. Sort of one that goes uh, like randomly. <laughs> a commercial business randomly goes inside of an enclosure. have to do with with SCP-2395. I think it's because it's part of the Light Car Courier Enterprises group of interest. That's why it's mentioned. Okay. Anyways, are you ready to see what the thumbnail is? Sure. <laughs> well, I mean, it's in Antarctica. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Oh, yep. There's the video. There's the license. Are you ready? Yeah. The Arctic winds blew hard against the scientist's face. <laughs> Dr. Kloss turned back to his assistant and yelled out, Are you hell? okay? He couldn't make out his assistant's face, but slowly came back and nod as he waved Dr. Kloss onwards. It was day three, and only half of the original party remained now. Two had been killed when that idiot Martin had yelled at them that the object in the sky had changed direction. What? The yell had triggered an avalanche and taken two researchers with it. He remembered turning back and seeing their bodies tumbling down the rock face in a shower of snow and rock. <laughs> Dr. Mason had perished a day later. The combination of... Yeah, there's added violence. The anomaly is not even here yet. <laughs> the anomaly is harmless. It doesn't hurt anyone. It's acting like... The way to get there is. Do they think Antarctica is. Defton? <laughs> I mean, I Antarctica. I mean, is severely cold, but it's not like mountainous, filled with mountains and death. <laughs> yeah, you can go through Antarctica without fine, but that character <laughs> looks underdressed. Yeah. How much does she actually have on? I don't know. We we're about to find out. <laughs> Hypothermia and lack of sleep had apparently driven her mad during the night. Ow. We tried to catch her, but she disappeared into the darkness, completely naked and laughing like a crazy person. I forgot what that illness is called. It has a name. Like when you... It's Hypothermia. Yeah, but I know it's like it's a sent it, it's the symptom has a name, a specific name. Probably. I forgot what it is. I don't feel like looking it up. Why don't we? That's fair. I have nothing to do with SCP anyway. <laughs> yeah. 
We tried to stop her husband, but he got away from us. We didn't see either of them again. Today, I bring you Euclid class objects SCP-2395. You're making a Euclid Sakitor. <laughs> and 98 cents. Don't forget to subscribe. All that remained was the four of us now, and it didn't look like Dr. Sandhouse was going to make it another day. His face was wind-beaten and dry, eyes blurry, and he was responding slower and slower. We weren't that high up, but I believe he was suffering from hypoxia. Still, there wasn't much we could do about it. The path back was partially collapsed, and our only hope for survival was to push on to the other side. Damn that thing in the sky. It had killed new and old friends alike. The what the hell was it? The dark Apparently, they're blaming the, the anomaly for <laughs> It's just a... It's a house with a person in it, and a sign for the price of Earth. <laughs> what? Was that? Yeah. And they're relatively stable. Right. In a shadow blotting out the sun, alien warship on final descent. We'd find out. What? One way or another. We took the risk that night and lit a fire. The fear of another avalanche was on all our minds. But considering the look of Dr. Sandhouse, we took that risk. For such a cold and windy night, I slept remarkably well. Upon awaking, it appeared Dr. Sandhouse had slept well too. Too well. He wouldn't rouse, and the blue of his face revealed what we had expected. We made a small makeshift tombstone, packed up our belongings, and continued on. The sky still dark and blotted out by that thing. We shortly reached level ground again, and could now see the shadow in the sky more clearly. It waved and danced in an abnormal fashion. Marin pointed out that it was waving east-west, but the wind was blowing west-east. I disregarded the comment, but he was right. It was blowing against the wind. It changed direction and even stopped, seemingly randomly, against the laws of physics. My assistant yelled out that he could make out a house in the distance. It appeared to be less than half a kilometer away from the base of the shadow object, now designated SCP-2395. Right, it's <laughs> Literally the size of money. Yeah. I, I honestly don't know. This we is proceeded towards really? the house. SCP well, there's the house. A. We reached the shack shortly after and cautiously investigated. It appeared to be inhabited by a female, but she did not reply to any of our attempts at communication. We called out to her, banged on the door, even threatened her. Nothing. But the chimney was alight, and we had seen her silhouette moving behind the windows. We slept outside the, the house, and on the next day, it yeah, nothing in her to go. Yeah, you're fine. Let's continue going. Tempted to force our way in. For whatever reason, we found the shack to be impenetrable. We tried for another day and night. And we <laughs> Where did the coin come from? <laughs> the magic gun popping out of nowhere. <laughs> Up and moved back to the shadow, we heard a sound coming from the door. It sounded like cutting, when suddenly the tip of a small handsaw popped through the wood of the door. It proceeded to cut a rectangular shape in the door, the approximate size of a mail slot. A letter That's popped out a bit too big for him. It read, yes, slot. Fine. Write down questions and I'll get to them in my own downtime. So, if you would prefer I pass notes like this rather than converse, all I'd like to do is ask a few questions regarding your environment and role. Would this be fine? Less than 10 words or else you're wasting my time. Could you explain why you're here? Wait, it's less... Or equal to, not less than. Yeah, but 
remember in the article it said this was all passed over it was all between two or three days between notes as well as a doctor dr mills yeah dr cloud so they've literally replaced a woman yep freaking cold all day and i have work what kind of work i'm waiting for purchase offers the price isn't set in stone but this is kind of a minimum we have to offer to make but a profit so you're working longer? for an organization i don't know why are they acting like they're they were able to, they never no one knows what she looks like right she could be black brown polka dot but of course but they chose white Yeah, they did. You blind or something? Name's on the door. Can you explain the shadow's movement? Already said I'm trying to make a sale here. What exactly are you selling? Earth. Please elaborate. Earth. Planet. Terra Nova. Blue ball of life. Flesh cesspool, etc., etc. That doesn't explain the shadow's movement. Well, you know when you pick up a stick with a dying leaf on it? When you pick up something at a store with a price tag attached to it and inspect it a bit and the price tag might flop around a bit and you might grab the price tag to get a look at the price now imagine something else looking at that price tag actually scratch that since you can't you getting it now we're selling the earth and i'm busy speaking to willing buyers it was at this point that it dawned on Klaus. the object wasn't an alien ship or a looming shadow of doom it was a price tag. It was a what price the fuck? For... <laughs> it's in outer space. You think that wouldn't be noticed by the people of Earth? Like, come on. <laughs> for... Yeah. Earth. <laughs> SCP-2395 is a giant price tag located at 82 degrees, 8 minutes, 2.1 seconds south, 16 degrees, 59 minutes, 5.5 seconds west in Antarctica. Observing aerial drones have recorded SCP-2395 to have the price of $585.98. SCP-2395 is tied to a small That's rebar loop embedded in the ground by a... <laughs> It's okay, Cherry. We already know what rating we're gonna give it. <laughs> Alright, let's keep going. By a 0.7 meter length of twine. SCP 2395's dimensions are 258 meters by 90 meters in length and width. A 2.5 meter layer of polyethylene covers the paper inscribed with SCP 2395's price. If this wasn't strange enough, SCP-2395 seems to be unaffected by wind conditions, and instead pretty much does whatever it wants. Sometimes it blows directly into the wind, other times it spins repeatedly for indefinite amounts of time. Crazy. 0.3 kilometers east of SCP-2395 is SCP-2395-A. It's a shack. Just a shack. A shack with what seems to be some odd humanoid female within. She isn't very friendly. At all. The door to this shack is labeled LCE. This lady, SCP-2395-B, doesn't respond to the Foundation's request to speak. Or to mine. We have, however, heard her talking to others. Quite rude, if you ask me. Never heard Observation her. post right. is It was letters. They weren't talking. Also, I re looked at the SCP to see and the it is a giant tag. The only thing that wasn't giant was the was what it's on. What it's on, yeah. But it also doesn't say the size of the price tag. It just says giant price tag. It says the dimensions are. Oh, did I miss that? By ninety. And with uh, a width of two point five. So, not as big as in the video, but big. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing holding it isn't, like, tall, so. 
Yeah. Is to maintain communication I forgot. <laughs> I was because we probably reading other SCPs. SCP SCP yeah. Five A, a precautionary 250 meter radius zone around SCP-2395 has been established, which Observation Post 44 will continue to monitor for any notable movement. This is the beginning of the article. Further information from SCP-2395A's occupant has been deemed unlikely following communication with Dr. Mill. I the added Dr. Mill at the very end. I feel like we can't count it as having... Yeah. They had someone else take her place, then mentioned her at the end. Yeah. Avoid this SCP. Not all SCPs have to be dark, gruesome, or terrifying. Sometimes even the most mundane objects have a story to share. You literally the next time you're out shopping... <laughs> Shopping and get a rude shock from a price tag. Remember, you never know who or what else might be looking to purchase that item. It might just be the steal of the century. Okay, let's judge this. All right. <laughs> Removal of character slash license. Two. The yeah. license is there, but the, the only actual. Yeah. There's only one character. In that entire thing, and they somehow were. Yeah. Added gore. Oh, sorry. Would you put it as a three or two? Uh, I put two down. You said. Yeah, I said two, and then I changed. Thoughts were. Because the only character it really has is totally removed. Yeah. I changed it to a three. Okay. Added gore or violence? Well. Four. <laughs> yeah. Somehow. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he's from the plot of the article. I think we're both thinking four with how much you're. Yeah. Only men in the video. Four. Yeah, because they. Yeah. Yeah. A bunch of weirdos doesn't count. How does their most simple SCP? I don't know. <laughs> so we got five percent. Five percent again. Oh my god. I want two nine one two to be. Better rated. <laughs> Next, 2912 is Clowny Clown Clown. <laughs>